In a previous module, we had learned the different assumptions that we make while fitting a linear model to a data set. One of those assumptions was autocorrelation. By autocorrelation, we mean when we try to fit a regression model to a time series data, there is sometimes correlation between the error terms, which means that there are some correlation between successive error terms in the model. In such a case, we need to figure out a way of fixing this problem because the presence of autocorrelation in data set upsets the estimation and inference procedure. In this module, we will learn what autocorrelation is and we will see the serious consequences of autocorrelation in fitting a linear model. Autocorrelation occurs when the Gauss-Markov assumption of uncorrelated error terms is violated. That is, when covariance between epsilon t and epsilon s not equals 0 for t not equals s, where epsilon are the error terms in the linear model. Now, autocorrelation is often paired with heteroscedasticity, which is another assumption of Gauss-Markov. Under heteroscedasticity, we assume that the error terms have different variances. Now, autocorrelation is often paired with heteroscedasticity because it is another way in which the variance covariance matrix of the true error terms is different from the Gauss Markov assumption that ep expectation epsilon prime epsilon equals sigma square times i n, where i n is the identity matrix of order n. Now, in case of autocorrelation, we have errors that co-vary. That is, if one error is positive and large, the next error is likely to be positive and large. In the case of one error, can give us information about the other. In general, the correlation between epsilon t and epsilon t minus k is called autocorrelation of order k. Similarly, the correlation between epsilon t and epsilon t minus 1 is called autocorrelation of order 1 and is usually denoted by rho 1. Now, what does autocorrelation imply about the variance covariance matrix of errors? In general, when there is no autocorrelation present, then the variance covariance matrix of error looks like a diagonal element, diagonal matrix with all the diagonal elements equals sigma square and all the off diagonal elements are 0. However, when autocorrelation is present, the variance covariance matrix takes the following form. It is a matrix where each element is given by expectation of epsilon i epsilon j, where epsilon i and epsilon j are the i and j error terms. The diagonal elements give us the variances of these error terms and the off diagonal elements give us the covariance which are not 0 any longer. Now, what are the causes of autocorrelation? The three major causes of autocorrelation are misspecification of a model or omitted variables from the model or systematic errors in measurement introduced into the data set. Now, when we talk about omission of variables, what really happens in omission of variables is that one factor that can cause autocorrelation is if yt is related to x2t and x3t, but we wrongfully do not include x3t in the model, then the effect of x3t will be captured by the disturbances or the error terms epsilon t. If x3t like many economic series exhibit a trend over time, then x3t depends on x3t minus 1, 3t minus 2 and so on. Similarly, epsilon t depends on epsilon t minus 1, t minus 2 and so on. The second cause of autocorrelation could be a misspecified model. This is a very obvious cause for any kind of violation of linear model assumption. Suppose yt is related to variable x2t with a quadratic relationship, which looks like this yt equals beta naught plus beta 1 x2t square plus epsilon t. 
but we wrongfully assume and estimate a straight line and we fit the model which looks somewhat like this y t equals beta naught plus beta 1 x 2 t plus epsilon t. Then the error term obtained from the straight line will depend or get influenced by x 2 t square and this will introduce autocorrelation. Another cause of autocorrelation is the systematic error in measurement. Now suppose a company updates its inventory at a given period of time. If a systematic error occurred, then the cumulative inventory stock will exhibit the cumulated measurement error and these errors will show up as an autocorrelated error in the linear model. So thus, when we have any one of these three problems in our linear model or in the specification of the model or selection of variables for the model, then there is a chance of autocorrelation being present. Now let us define the first order autocorrelation which is the most commonly observed form of autocorrelation and this is the most simplest form of autocorrelation that we observe. So consider the multiple regression model which is y t equals beta 1 plus beta 2 x 2 t plus beta 3 x 3 t plus beta p x p t plus epsilon t where beta p is the pth regression coefficient corresponding to the pth predictor variable in which the current observation of the error term epsilon t is a function of the previous observation of the error term which can be written in the following form epsilon t equals rho times epsilon t minus 1 plus u t. In first order autocorrelation, the coefficient rho is called the first order autocorrelation coefficient and it takes the value between minus 1 and plus 1. It is obvious that the size of rho will determine the strength of autocorrelation between the consecutive error terms. There are three separate cases which we can define based on the value that the autocorrelation coefficient rho takes. If rho is 0, then there is no correlation between the error terms. However, if rho approaches unity, the value of the previous observation of the error becomes more important in determining the value of the current error. In this case, we have high positive autocorrelation. And if rho approaches negative 1, we have high degrees of negative autocorrelation. In the next couple of slides, let me show you how we can graphically see the effect or the presence of autocorrelation. In this plot, we have time along the x-axis and the error term along the y-axis. And we can see a cyclical pattern in the plot of the error terms. Also, when we plot the error terms with their preceding error term values, we see there is a linear trend in the plot, which is a positive linear trend as we can see here. Again, if we plot another set of error variables against time in the x-axis, then we see a pattern in the plot of the error terms. And when we plot the error terms with respect to their previous values, then we see a negatively linear correlation between the error terms. Now when there is autocorrelation present, it has some serious consequences in the estimation of the parameters in a linear model and also the inferential methods. So as consequences of autocorrelation, we will discuss the following points. The impacts of autocorrelation on the ordinary least square estimate the effects of autocorrelation on testing of hypotheses and the effects on forecasting and prediction. Now impact of autocorrelation on the OLS estimates. OLS estimates are supposed to be unbiased and consistent even if errors are autocorrelated. However, the problem is with the efficiency of these estimates. While proving the Gauss-Markov theorem that established efficiency, one of the steps involved the minimization of the variance of linear combination summation a t times epsilon t, where epsilon t are the error terms. So the variances 
can be written as variance of summation a t epsilon t which is of the form summation a t square sigma epsilon square plus double summation a t a s times covariance of epsilon t epsilon s. Now we know that on the right hand side the term involving double summation is not equals 0 when there is autocorrelation present and hence it does not vanish thereby increasing the variance of the linear combination of our errors. Now due to the fact that covariance of epsilon t and epsilon s is not equal 0, the best linear unbiased estimator or the blue that minimizes variance of summation a t epsilon t will not be the same as the OLS estimator. The OLS estimator is thus not blue and hence is inefficient. The consequences of heteroscedasticity and autocorrelation is the same when it comes to OLS estimates of the parameters. Now if the autocorrelation in epsilon t is positive and the independent variable x t grows over time, then the estimated residual variance which is sigma hat square will be an underestimate and the value of r square for the fitted model will be an overestimate. In general, the variance of the OLS estimates for regression coefficients will be biased. Now the effects that autocorrelation would have on testing of hypotheses. The presence of autocorrelation has a very serious effect on the testing of hypotheses. When the autocorrelation is positive and the independent variable x t grows over time, estimated standard errors will be smaller than the true standard errors for the estimates and hence the estimated standard errors will be underestimated. As a result of autocorrelation, we then have t statistics which are divided by the standard error will be overestimated and the regression coefficient that appears to be significant due to the overestimated t statistic may not really be so actually. Since the estimated variances of the parameters will be biased and inconsistent, the t statistics and f statistics are no longer valid. The effects of autocorrelation on prediction and forecast. Now forecast based on the ordinary least square estimates in the presence of autocorrelation will be unbiased, however, they will be inefficient due to the inefficient estimates of the regression coefficients. Now suppose we ignore the AR1 serial correlation and obtain the OLS estimates alpha hat and beta hat. The OLS prediction would be yt hat equals alpha hat plus beta hat xt. However, in case of first order autocorrelation, epsilon t is predictable from rho times epsilon t minus 1 plus ut provided rho can be estimated by rho hat. So once we know epsilon t equals rho hat times epsilon hat t minus 1, the residual for the previous period epsilon t minus 1 hat is known at the time. Therefore, the AR1 prediction can now be obtained as yt tilde equals beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat xt plus rho hat times epsilon tilde t minus 1 and we can replace epsilon tilde by yi minus beta naught hat minus beta 1 hat times xt minus 1. Thus the prediction equation will look somewhat like this yt tilde equals beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat xt plus rho hat times yi minus beta naught hat minus beta 1 hat xt minus 1 by making use of the fact that epsilon hat t minus 1 equals yt minus 1 minus beta naught hat minus beta 1 hat times xt minus 1. Thus yt tilde will be more efficient than that obtained by the OLS procedure. So here is the summary of the properties of autocorrelation. If autocorrelation among the error terms is present in a regression model and is ignored, the OLS procedure is then used and in that case 
The resulting estimates and the forecasts based on them will still be unbiased and consistent. However, the OLS estimates are no longer blue and they will be inefficient and the estimated variance of the regression coefficients will be biased and hence the test of hypothesis will be invalid. In this module, we have learned what autocorrelation is. I have explained with the help of two plots how we can detec uh, detect out or not. In this module, we have learned what autocorrelation is and how autocorrelation can come into the data set that we are trying to fit. Now, the introduction of autocorrelation can have serious consequences and we have discussed some of those. In the next few models, we will discuss the method of detecting autocorrelation and the remedial measures of getting rid of autocorrelation before fitting a linear model to a data set.